recently in the news that Belarus is using migrants uh, to try and destabilize uh, the European Union. Uh, there are even reports that perhaps they are flying migrants in, at least Poland and Lithuania, uh, two OSCC uh, member countries have made those claims and they're using troops to bolster uh, their borders. I wanted to ask, how does that sort of action uh, reinforce some of the uh, already uh, serious issues that we've heard about uh, what they do in Belarus as, as far as human rights are concerned and uh, uh, and, and how does this sort of uh, help uh, 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 entrench uh, Lukashenko and, 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 and his hold on power there? Uh, Congressman, maybe if I could jump in and others yeah, please. could join. Um, thank you for the question. These are more than reports. This has been happening. Um, and this is the weaponization by Lukashenko with Russian support and facilitation of migrants into EU member states. Um, they have been flooding uh, the Lithuanian border, um, and also the Polish border, uh, somewhat the Latvian border. And this is payback in Lukashenko's mind for those countries' support for the democratic forces of Belarus. And it is imposing tremendous hardship on Lithuania in particular, but also Poland. Um, and they have asked for support not only from the EU, but from the United States. Uh, Foreign Minister Landsbergis from Lithuania was just in Washington last week and discussed this with Secretary of State Blinken. Um, and, and Lukashenko has been flying in migrants from the Middle East, in particular from Iraq, um, in some cases through Istanbul, um, and, and putting these, these uh, poor migrants in a terrible situation uh, where they are subject to uh, horrible conditions and are, are being used by him in a kind of hybrid warfare against these EU states. And we need to do what we can to try to stop this flow going into Belarus and impose any consequences on those engaged in it. Wow, that's, that's, that is amazing. What about the reports that, uh, that, there, that there was also- Do you hear me? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Uh, I yeah, would please like go right ahead. To add, uh, uh, yeah, regarding the refugees in Belarus, um, I suppose that this is like a temporary tactics. Yes, the one more step to use in this um, um, standoff between um, West uh, and Lukashenko. Yes, and uh, because we, we should understand that uh, refugees uh, are, are also a problem for Belarus because they're coming and staying there, and. Um, they cannot stay there for a long time and people in Belarus also facing uh, this issue yes that, uh, and they also authorities also need to uh, financially support these refugees and they cannot stay there for for a long time and then they should, should to, to send them back so this like yeah a tricky tricky step but uh, in that case it's not also convenient for regime Uh, it's also important to understand the um, uh, mechanism uh, of the use of uh, the refugees, specifically against Lithuania, uh, mainly because Lithuania is a small country with a small population, and it's a country uh, which is uh, predominantly uh, white, and that has a specific attitude towards uh, Middle Eastern uh, refugees as let's call them philosophically the others, uh, the people who are distinctively different. And uh, playing with these uh, cultural uh, differences, uh, Alexander Lukashenko is using the migrants to create an internal crisis of democracy and internal political crisis in this country, to create a similar crisis in Poland, which is less affected due to its population, but still migration uh, is a very debatable and touchy issue in Poland and Lithuania, just like in this country here in the United States. And um, what uh, Lukashenko and uh, his allies have in mind is to create the kind of destabilization that would lead the, to the crisis of democracy, uh, similar to what we are witnessing, let's say, in Orban's Hungary. So that's really important to understand why he's using refugees and what's the uh, learn time logic behind that. Even though the, the migrants themselves 
uh, appear in large numbers, let's say 300 people for Lithuania is a lot, if this is the number that uh, would try to cross the border every day, uh, it's a certain amount of money that needs to be spent on them. But also, uh, the refugees are being used as acknowledged by the governments of Poland and the Baltic countries, uh, countries as elements uh, or the agents of hybrid war. However, uh, it's really important to highlight that although the European Union and its member countries are using, using this term and this terminology, uh, this terminology is not being used by NATO. Uh, and uh, I wonder why uh, this terminology is not being used and uh, why NATO is not playing more active role uh, in the solution of this crisis and uh, in the relations uh, between Alexander Lukashenko and uh, the threat that he is imposing to at least two NATO members, or uh, to be precise, three member members uh, if we include Latvia, since Latvia is less affected by the immigration crisis at the moment. Interesting. Uh, also, uh, one more thing in closing. So with Lukashenko's recent announcement uh, that he is going to cede power to some local government officials. Is that basically just something to sort of put a softer face on what he's doing, particularly now that he's weaponizing migrants and just and the other human rights abuses that we've heard that are happening in Belarus? Uh, because I don't think that he was ever very specific about which powers he was going to give up. Is this just sort of a PR game that he's playing? And I'd appreciate if it would be a brief response. Yes. Two more members want a question. The distinctive feature of the uh, current crisis in Belarus is that uh, all the things that were happening within the country are now happening at a larger scale. So whenever Lukashenko is promising something, uh, there's very little possibility that he would stick to uh, his promises and uh, certain agreements that he has given, and he's definitely not giving up his personal power. Congressman go 